This is not a test Don't expect to be impressed Put on your life vest Sit down your armrest It's time to stray from the grind Don't take my hand cause you'll find No peace of mind Hey, Ian Deviants, Junior Adventures and Friends. Welcome back to another side quest, the episode between the episodes. Uh, I'm your host, MK Gibson, or Gibby to my friends, and, and uh, fuck you to my enemies. Who do I have with me today? John, go ahead and introduce yourself. Fuck you. Oh, wait, right. no. Um, Damn it. Hi, I'm John Hartness. I, I am back for the night. Um, been on the shelf for a little bit. We'll go back there once we're done, but I want to talk shit about trailers and remakes, so I'm here for this. Um, I do a bunch of stuff. I publish a bunch of people. I write a bunch of things, but most important for you nerds is my new collection, Not Safe for Work. The Hartness Shingles collection is available right now in hardcover and in paperback. You can get the individual... I think I'm getting an ebook too, and you can get the individuals all on Audible. So if you want to experience the full heartness shingling, you can do so. Also, the new Quincy Harker book, Lost, is available for purchase now. So yeah, I've released two books on my dude, hiatus. Dude, came off the shelf, man. Plug that man's a plug machine. Jesus, that's awesome, dude. Congratulations. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Hi there, I'm Steve Weverall, and I have wrote books such as the Brandon Firemaster books, which you could check out if you like the character Brandon Firemaster. Uh, if you don't, check them out anyway. Uh, I always appreciate the attention. Freaking Who fantastic. the fuck are you, Gibby? <laughs> uh, Mike M.K. Gibson. I, I actually had to quiz Steve the other day. I was like, do you even know what the M's, you know my first name is? I know is? what the no, M's stand You're Gibby. <laughs> you had to think about it for a minute. No. Uh, <laughs> I write such books as the Shadow Master series, uh, the Technomancer series, and uh, Hammer of Witches and a few others. Uh, check them out. Everything's available on Kindle Unlimited. Most are on Audible. I'm trying to get some more out there, but trying to find a new narrator is a, kind of a pain in the butt at the moment. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about it's it's March movie madness basically there are a lot of new trailers there are a lot of new shows there are a lot of new geek projects that are coming out and uh you know you can't be a nerd in the nerdosphere and not be tangentially aware of a few of these projects and being nerds <laughs> we're also immediately Gibby you can either- only say that because Bevan's not here <laughs> he's you know, the king I don't, of being tangentially he's unaware is, like, he's other than Dungeons and Dragons I think he's just nerd adjacent so I, I can't peg him no. down. No, no, he's a giant nerd. He's a giant nerd, just in very specific bubbles. And he has zero interest of anything outside of those bubbles. Yeah. That is he, he will obsess about free movies. Yeah. And, and, uh, there, and nothing made before, <laughs> nothing made after 1989. I know. So hmm. I've, I've joined him for a few of his movie nights and they're not, they are classics. Uh, yeah. But like I said, anything, some of these flicks being nerds, you immediately like, or these shows, you immediately like love it or hate it, or you have an opinion based on nothing other than like the three minutes that you watch. So we're going to watch a couple of these trailers. Uh, we'll talk over them, uh, give our opinions and our thoughts. So gentlemen, what would you like to start with first? Uh, would you like to see three body problem? the new crow the fallout trailer or the new star wars acolyte let's do let's structure it so that we do the new stuff first and then we move into the remakes because that'll give steve and i time to get further into our adult beverages (laughs) my my list of grievances so better equipped to completely shit talk roadhouse and the crow Oh yeah, well I'll find the I'll find Roadhouse too if we want. Uh, Three Body Problem I think is the is one that's not a remake. It's obviously it's an adaptation of a book series, but it is not a remake or another an existing IP property that is has been global. So we'll start with that one first. So share. Can screen. either of you pronounce the name of the author of the trilogy because I am completely incapable. Not without making somebody angry, I imagine. I don't know the gentleman that wrote the series, so I. 
and I am a Southern white boy, so I am completely <laughs> incapable of pronouncing. I would his have name. to look it up. But I still can't pronounce Rick's name. I'm not trying this. Guatemala, Ricky Guatemala. We established this. So, ooh. All right. Can you all hear? Me or is it just me? I can hear it. I can't hear shit. Oh, I can't hear it now. You can or cannot? I cannot hear it. Huh. But I've also watched the trailer. Well, you can see the subtitles. <clears throat> yes. Oh, this is a different trailer than the one I watched. All right. So, fans, what we have is a obviously a Netflix show, and it's describing a, a lot of old technology from the 70s and the modern. When I first heard the free body problem, I thought this was going to have a lot, a lot more sexual content. All right, I'm going to be very honest and pause right there. I understand, like my first, my first possible grievance is is from the creators of uh, the showrunners of Game of Thrones, and I immediately reached out to John when he mentioned this to me. I'm like, is this? I don't know the series. I, I just realized that it was a book series. Is it done, or we're going to have that adaptation problem where as soon as they run out of source material, it's just going to be a shit show and shooting from the hip. Yeah. There are two types of great writers, people who do character, dialogue, and memorable moments really well, and people who can land a fucking plot. And the Game <laughs> of Thrones guys were definitely not in that second category. I read a lot of the Game of Thrones. Their stuff, like dialogue between the Hound and Ira in the TV show, was much better than the book. Battle of the Bastards in the book would be something that was casually referenced by someone. In the TV show, fucking brilliant. But- and I will. As soon will, as that guide rope was gone, they were fucked. I will tell you what, though, though, sir. I, I have a screenshot somewhere. The Battle of the Bastards is when things was that was the turn for the worst. And I say this because there is literally a moment where John's plot armor creates an air, like a, a, a shield of arrows. He's on the ground. Arrows land around his body. Not one hits him, and you can see his physical plot armor on screen. And it you call it, it plot was, armor. I call it rule of cool. Uh, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, it was from that moment forward that when things, the beginning of the series is the characters drove the plot. The characters did something. There was an action and a reaction to over and over and over that drove the plot. From the Battle of the Bastards forward, it was the plot happened and the characters followed along spouting catchphrases. And that was, that yeah, was the turn. It, you're right. It was the beginning of the end, but in terms of like a battle sequence, oh, it looked claustrophobic, cool. no, it looked getting cool, yes. stomped into the mud shit, that was... It looked very cool. And sometimes I just want something that looks cool. Fair enough. One thing that I wish people would understand is that from the creators of Game of Thrones is not a selling point for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, it still carries a bad taste in the mouth. Yes. Now, but that being said, the three body problem the is part of a tr is part of a completed trilogy of books. So they cannot run out of guide rope they can hang themselves with it. But I have not read the book and I keep meaning to, because I hear great things, but I understand this is really high concept sci-fi. That I understand the same thing. And that's why I haven't read it because I honestly don't think I'm smart enough to understand it. I barely understand. It's never been a problem for me, John. I just roll along. <clears throat> I barely understand the concept of the three body problem, which is a scientific it's a it's a mathematical physics thing. Yeah, not a sex thing. No, it is not a sex no. thing. It has to do with the fact <laughs> that when you've got three things moving in space, you can't ever really calculate where oh. crap it is. So kind of a sex thing. You maybe just either me. need to get laid more or less, my friend. I'm not sure which, but it's, uh, somewhere in between, John. I'm one of those out. things. <laughs> this is the kind of this is the kind of show that it um I, it looks very heady. It looks very cerebral. It looks very time travelly. It looks very like the past, the present, and the future all are influencing one another at the same time. And I like those kind of weird. What was the name of that show that was on um Hulu? The uh, the the guy from uh, Parks and Rec, the beard, and I can't the amazing actor, and I can't think of his name. Um, he played this weird guy who was trying to basically look back through time and he was basically helping to create a, a stable time machine to observe the past and it was an amazing show and i cannot think of the name of it it was brilliant it, it has this kind of vibe to it there's a there's a level of Got genius nothing. i and, feel uh, like a total sellout because we've been absolutely spoiled with great sci-fi shows recently yeah. and nobody's fucking watching them <laughs> 
I think so just, I think that this will run into a little bit of the same problem, Steve, because I I agree that it does seem very heady. It seems very smart, and I don't think there's going to be enough dick jokes and explosions for it to lock in a ton of viewers. I feel bad because this is the kind of shit I'm always saying we need more of, and it needs a proper budget buying it, a proper time, proper care. They keep doing it, but I'm just saying, hey, God, uh, sorry, I'm playing a fucking Legend of Zelda Game Boy game from 1998. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at it, and it's beautiful. It mm-hmm. looks really smart. It looks like the kind of thing I really want to get into and i will almost certainly never watch it it reminds me of the books that you keep on your shelf that they only exist so that when friends come over you look smart i like oh yeah. that's a great that's an amazing book have you read it no but it looks the good free on body shelf. problem more yeah. like the nobody problem because nobody's gonna watch it <laughs> take that nerd <laughs> <laughs> i mean honestly if you write enough books and your name is just on the spine of a lot of books on in your house then you look smart as long as none of the people who come visit you have ever read the shit you write Absolutely. that's what oh, i'm always going for yeah, it, yeah exactly or i'm just a raging narcissist and a little bit of both i have mm. i take i get a lot of like my book covers put on that canvas print and i have in my office and sometimes people like someone comes by like i hey, mean you write all these i'm like yes yeah. so like and you put them on your walls get out of my house so yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, right there with you, babe. <laughs> They're right behind me. So. Um, oh. No, I think the I think three body problem. I'll check it out. I'm going to give it at least at least one episode's worth of a look. It looks like it could be really smart. It feel what was that Jodie Foster sci fi flick from way back when? Um, Contact. Yeah. Mm. It looks a little like that, or maybe oh, like a rival. Okay. Um, See, I I did not like the arrival at the time. I think I need to go, go back and rewatch it with more adult eyes because at the time it was just wow. Like the the timey wimey stuff always frustrates me because it's every every time travel almost always ruins every movie, with the exception of Back to the Future. It's like it almost always ruins every franchise and it frustrates me um mm. it because no one can agree on it no one has got the same concept of time travel and it just it, the nerd stuff starts breaking down yeah try yeah if you, if you spend too show. long on any one concept of time travel it quickly becomes a cage i think uh a very loose spaghettified cage but i'm interested in this i've heard so much about the book and somebody's done me the favor of condensing it into a watchable format that I'm not going to fall asleep while I'm trying to do it. I so, believe the author's no name guarantees. is, is uh, Lu Shijin. If I'm not okay. mistaken, I might be mistaken. Okay. But, um, you know, if you are mistaken, let he tried. He did his best. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, somebody like somebody in somebody who's following this podcast, kick my ass in the comments. Make sure I watch this. We really should be watching shit like this. <laughs> I All still right, have so, at least one, I still have at least a season and a half of the expanse to catch up on, but exactly. I mean done that and I, that, I'm, again, the, I'm really that guy that effort. like every time there's something new on, unless it's popcorn, and I hate to say this about myself, when something's popcorn, I can have it on in the background. I just I can be doing something else at the same yeah. time. When something's new and heady and I have to stop everything I'm doing, my ADHD the ADD won't let me. I, I, I it's I want to sit down, but like having to sit still and focus is like, it, it's like nails on a chalkboard these days. Like the concept of like, now if it's really good, I'll close the laptop and pay attention, but getting myself into the chair, getting myself sitting yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. Now this might work better for me because it's a series, not a movie, because sure, I find sure. that about a 42 to 50 minute chunk is yes. where my, is where I can focus. So I can binge episode after episode mm. of a TV show Whereas movies are harder because it's a longer time and it's frame. A, it's a longer passive experience where you've got you're kind of locked in, and I, yeah, you know, it's that locked in feeling I don't like. So, moving on from that, my the problem crow, with these things is uh, at some point during it, I'm like, "Nah, this is really good," and then I think I look at my phone and think I can make a completely fucking stupid joke about this on social media. It derails <laughs> the whole experience. I need to put my phone in another room. 
realize I'm not as funny as I think I am and just watch the fucking show. I mean, look, we'll be happy to tell you that you're not as funny as you I mean, think I'd you are. I mean, I do it on the regular. I mean, it's, I've it's, edited I you. <laughs> I know. It's, it's Your fine. accent alone is, you know. I know. That's the only thing keeping me afloat. People assume I'm being funny. I'm not. I'm just English. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to play the Crow trailer next. Now, is anybody else like me that they grew up with the Crow? Did they grow yeah. up in that era and they, <sighs> they more than they should? Oh, my God. Yeah. I watched a crow. I thought it was brilliant. I tried to watch the other crow movies, not so much. I tried to read the exactly. crow comic books. A completely different fucking experience. The original yes. comic. The original comic. I still have my trade paper back from back in the day. It is dog eared, it is bookmarked, it has been handled to shit and back. And it is beautiful. It is poetic. It is an art piece as long not as the movie. as well as telling his amazing story. <laughs> Nothing like the movie. No. And, <laughs> no. But the original Brandon Lee movie had its own obviously it has a cult following. It unfortunately followed the actor's yeah. death. And, you know, it, it kept the hot topic afloat for 20 years. So uh, Exactly. This is the thing about that movie, what people don't realize. Like, guy coming back from the dead and getting revenge, it's a really fucking played out trope. It happened all the fucking time in much right. less popular movies. But the thing that kept that movie so pertinent is it was a vibe that no one was really exploring at the time. I remember talking to a goff about it, like a proper goff PVC and big black lipstick. And she was uh, like, oh, I, you know, I saw the crow, but I'd already seen the matrix. So I didn't really see the point of it. And I was like, you're right. That was the next big golf vibe. Yeah, and if you kind of, if you weren't there at the time, tiny black sunglasses, trench coats. Yeah, leather. exactly. It's, it's like a, it was the entire point of that movie was the golf vibe. I owned all of the individual issues of The Crow. Then I sold off those when I heard they were making a movie and made a pile of money off of it. Got a trade paperback, read it till it was soul falling of apart. Soul a publisher. Yeah. Right. And, giant, and I've been a giant whore for a long time, Steve. And I read some of the other comics that came after, like the one in the Wild West, one with the female crow, the one with the Native American crow, the one that was- Oh, I, mean, I, 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 I love these- I, Well, James O'Barr contributed to several of them, you know, because it's like, you know, hey, he made some more extra money because he made this thing back yeah. in 1980 and it did nothing. Right. And then so- 13 years later, someone comes along and goes, hey, we want to turn this into a property. And all of a sudden, like, they're reprinting all this shit again. And, you know, I think that's the dream of any writer is to, like, make as much money as humanly possible and people appreciate yeah. your work. Big fistfuls of cash, golden exactly. castle. I yeah. want fuck me money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's better than fuck you money. Um, and Obar well, is still getting paid on that book today. I mean, he's <laughs> still doing convention appearances and all of that. And good for him. Well, and it's also it's one of those art. It's one of those things that was born of tragedy. If you know the backstory, you know you know how like uh, his wife was killed by a drunk driver, and this, he took this 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 personal tragedy and put it into this this. He had to put his catharsis somewhere, and you know, it created something that was a phenomenon. So when I play this trailer, <laughs> this new remake, I'm going to be very upfront. Like I'm not going to try to color your opinion, but it is. I hate when people say blank for a modern audience. Or blank for adults. Oh uh, yeah, it, always, modern it frustrates me it's because just, you're not trying to make something timeless. You're trying to make something time full, which means it's got fucking an expiration date. Yeah, and I will also say this: as you watch this trailer, obviously you can't hear the sound unless you find it at the same time it sync up. But just watching the action scenes, it's Deadpool <laughs> without the jokes or charisma, and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've watched the trailer and. I have opinions. Okay. We will at any point you want to say pause and just tell me to pause and I we will stop this as it's going along. There's a crow. Oh look, it's Dark City with Kevin Bacon. All right, first point. How much fucking daylight do you want in your crow movie? I want zero fucking daylight in my crow movie. Well, now, from what I understand, these in this story, they're both recovering addicts. That's what's been told about the the story. So, wow, addicts, they met in rehab. Addicts are sexy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was they the also, first thing I thought about train spotting. Was oh my god, these people are fantastically hot. Oh my god, these are so hot. Now, I will say that the <laughs> song on addict. this trailer is a banger. It's the Post Malone and Ozzy Osbourne mashup that is really good. Yeah, I, I'm not going to fault the soundtrack. Well, oh, I am because the the one from the '90s had that killer oh, soundtrack of an era. So I burned the grooves off my CD mm. off the right. crow soundtrack from yeah. And but we're we're a ways from that now, and this is they're still doing something cool, and that's okay. 
Yeah. And it was, and it was Danny Elfman doing the score. Wasn't it? Yeah. The the instrumental stuff. Was it? I like a Danny Elfman Elfman score. Yeah. I like a bit of Ongoi Bongoi. Now here's the thing. Crazy. I like this actor. He's the scars guard. That's the scars guard. You know, he's one of the scars guards. You see, get shot, does the thing, classic crow, but you're going to notice in some of these action scenes, whether the car or his over the shoulder shooting, it's just Deadpool. Belly full of bricks there. Typical Skarsgård from the Skarsgård clone farm, wherever they grow them. Yes. He's a bit too brutal. That's the thing. He's not. Now, also, I love the actor Danny Houston, but he's such a bad, not bad, bad character, the bad guy character actor at, I see him and he almost pulls me out of the movie these days or TV show. Yeah. That, uh, that guy can become too much of a, that guy. That's true. I don't was, get was, the makeup. Was he, point, was he put, pointing a sword in a mirror there? Yeah. Because again, he definitely that's, was. That's a bit too emo really. And what's with the, uh, why the eyeliner? I, and I should not say that's too emo in a fucking crow movie. I really shouldn't. It shouldn't be possible. It and yet possible. here we are. Yeah. I don't mind this. Yeah, I know what you're saying about this is Deadpool without the jokes or charisma. I don't mind this kind of aggressive taking a bullet, giving a bullet. Okay, so here's my take. I, mean, I think an executive took a huge rip of Coke. Mm-hmm. I got this great idea. We still Standard have the cameras and yeah. we have, the, we have the same cameras and locations from John wick, right? Fantastic. We take yeah. Deadpool, film it like John wick. No jokes. The crow. Oh, oh this is going to, this, this is going to sell. It's just completely lacking. It's got a style, but it hasn't got the style of a crow. This is what I don't like about remakes. I don't mind continuations. I don't mind. We're going to pick this up 30 years later and do something different. But it's saying this is a remake of The Crow. You can't do that and entirely miss the point of that movie because it was its era and it was its vibe. And if you're stacking those two things off, you don't have The Crow. You just have a sexy man killing people. In the 90s, it used the music of the era because that's what was going around. I don't think they were trying to say, we're going to make a 90s time capsule. That's not what their goal was to do. They were trying to make a story that was. they just made it in the 90s. Uh, This one feels like it's very much, we're going to make our guy a SoundCloud rapper. He's going to look like Post Malone. He's going to, you know, and it's, um, I get the Jared Leto Joker look, you know, that that ha 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 tattoo, you know. Uh, But the thing is- I will see this. The Crow was a 90s- Time capsule. And if you're going to try and remake it without it being a nice time, you're not going to remake it. You're just making, it may as well just be a different fucking movie. Yeah. I think the thing that I like the least is that it is so fucking obviously built to create a franchise. Oh yeah. It's It's so obviously built of putting on the mantle of the crow. A crow carries them. Sometimes you're too fucked up to die and then you come back. And Mm. while I didn't watch any of the follow-ups to the original crow because I didn't care, um, I think that we would have been better served to just make a new ish story and call it the crow. Don't make it be Eric Draven's story. This, yeah, I did watch all, all, all three sequels. Because <laughs> I watched some was, of the TV series that too oh, well, missed see, the point. The, very the, hard. Show, the, the show, God bless it. Cause like, you know, Ever since Only the Strong, I've been in, you know, obviously Iron Chef, you know, Mr. DaCosta has, Mark DaCosta is is just, he's a fantastic guy, and I love everything he's in. Uh, I love Only the Strong. Exactly. I'm such a we'll nerd watch it for right that now. movie. Exactly. Yes. Pot in the way. We'll do it. Like, you know. I, and I have a capoeira playlist that I use when I'm writing fight scenes. Nice. I, Eddie Gorder from Tekken. Yes, I grew up watching Only the Strong. Like, there's that one picture of me floating around doing a one arm handstand. It's because I watched that movie so damn much. I was highly into martial arts at the time. I'm going to teach myself to do this shit. I hurt myself a lot, but I eventually pulled off that handstand long enough to take a picture. And that's it. You know, so. Yeah, there's a photo of me going around doing a one arm handstand, but that was just me falling over in a mosh pit. 
Oh, <laughs> There's one of me doing a one-armed handstand, but it involved a lot of Photoshop and three people holding various well, appendages this was, let me to see, get this me was into that position. 30 years ago and at least 60 pounds ago. So, yeah. It, <laughs> oh, mine was last week. It's Photoshop. Oh, fair man. enough. It's great. <laughs> yeah, do your thing. Uh, but so, yeah, I'm going to see the movie. But with I, reservations, I can safely say, having talking to some female acquaintances of mine, that they are of the opinion that if this scars guard wants to come back from the dead and beat him up, it's very welcome to. So I think it's got that going for. Oh, him. he's. I'm not going to take away like for eye candy. He's he's got it going. He's got the thrust bucket. You know, he's lean but ripped at the same time. So yeah, but I, there's already another scars guard action movie coming out. Boy kills world, and I definitely want to see that. Same actor in a better looking movie. Yes. Now, is that like the Winnie the Pooh blood and honey version of Boy Meets World? Is Topanga uh, just going to go fucking ape shit on the universe? I hope so. But then they gave us something better. This is something that 17 year old me who was getting into filmmaking. If somebody said, here's an ungodly amount of money uh, that we're irresponsibly going to give to you to make a movie. I would have uh, said, I want to make Boy Kills World, which looks fucking ridiculous, and I can't wait for it. All right, so Gibby, roll that one. beautiful bean footage. Show me the Boy which Kills one? World. The I'm boy working on doing it. I'm doing it right now, sir. Because I have not you, seen this trailer. You so. need okay. So, do you have a second screen so you can actually pull it up and hear the sound? Because the best part of the, about the trailer the is this, yeah. the actor doesn't is he's got an internal monologue because he can't speak and it's the guy who does the voice of Archer H John Benjamin is his internal monologue. So yes. like I, I so if you want I will send you the link that I'm using so it will sync up. Yeah, <laughs> just like an at the movies experience that you can get on Orphans and Dragons at the movies. One second, Let's get a plug there. That. So this is the same Scars Guard then because I can't tell them apart. Yeah, that is. It is Bill Skarsgård. They're kind of like they're like Baldwin's. You get the well, he's cheap baby Baldwin, the expensive Baldwin. Yeah, he's the baby of the group. The old Skarsgård. Uh, the old Skarsgård is the one that's a hellacious actor. Yeah. No, he's great, but they're all from the same clone batch. The very beginning of the trailer, he does this man own a shirt? Why if would you? Hey, dude, if I had abs like that, I would. I, I would not. I mean, you do have right. abs like that. They're just covered. If I looked like that, I'd turn up a funeral without a shit. I would be at the sa- I would be at the food lion in the produce <laughs> section, just like, oh, do you need these carrots? All right. Uh, three, ready? Three, two, one, playing. We should definitely interrupt this because I'm, I'm not going to want to interrupt this because it's brilliant. <laughs> so it, it's game show futuristic murder so it's like running man sort of better but it's hosted by serial mascots now i think he's also wearing the michael jackson bad jacket vest without the sleeves which is amazing i do like that jacket anytime you get uh famka jansen back on screen i'm happy to see that it's voiced by H. John Benjamin of Archer fame. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I'm pretty sure I saw that same training mo- montage move. Insert crazy action. Mo- Producer Sam Raimi. That's all you need to know. That's all I need to know. Right. If there's not a Bruce Campbell cameo in this. Oh, I know. I'm going to hurt somebody. There's going to come a day where we're going to lose Bruce Campbell and we're all going to be sad. We need to make the most of him while he's still here. I mean, we've already lost Sam Raimi's car because they blew that up, which is still very sad to me. If you enjoy Hmm. this, Steve, please tell me you've seen Guns Akimbo. Oh, yeah, of course. uh, Yeah. Daniel Radcliffe. John, if you like what you're seeing on screen right now, this kind of insanity. uh, So Daniel, it's in a similar vein. Daniel Radcliffe gets kidnapped by an underground black internet murder television show organization gets two guns bolted into his hands and basically says survive for the next 48 hours. And that's it. And that's the crazy. It's kind of like what you're seeing now, this insanity, but with Harry Potter running around trying to take a piss with two guns in his hands. You know, it is, it's a fucked up fun movie. I'm here for it. And I think Daniel Radcliffe is an underrated actor. So, Oh, a thousand percent. I really actually, this looks like, 
somebody took guns akimbo and fucked crank and crank too and then sam remy raised a child which is i mean there's a lot in that trailer that i think is kind of like at this point kind of played out trailer tropes but right. works perfectly yeah the it's it's the whole the whole music behind it hmm. the light happy music the big band yes yeah. it's been violence. done a lot but for a lot more disappointing trailers. yeah this did it really well mm. i'm i'm in I was kind of I was over that, and then I saw this trailer and thought, "Oh, that's that's well, a trope like, what that can like, still be like revived." The same but different. Give fans something they already know with, with a twist on it, and just there is a fresh coat of paint onto this kind of insanity, and I'm mm. in for it because just there are just enough little tweaks, just a little differences that bring me, and I'm on board. Which brings me to the next one that I'm super excited for, which is the Fallout trailer, dude. Uh, right. Uh, Hold that thought. Put in the, I'll put in this. Yeah, I'll put in the Slack as well. So if you oh no, I've seen the Fallout time. trailer. I don't know if Steve I've has seen or the not. Fallout trailer too. Yeah, and I've never played the game. Well, oh, nice. There's now Fallout Magic cards too. <laughs> the challenge I think that the Fallout show is going to have, because since the Magic ser- since the Magic decks released two weeks ago. I've been playing a lot of Fallout Magic the Gathering and I restarted playing Fallout 4. Holy shit, which Fallout do you pick? Uh Fallout 4 or New Vegas, I think is where you like if you or someone who has never played cuz you can't going backwards with some of the old janky games is kind of it's kitschy well, but unless you know it, you don't do Oh it. yeah. No, that's what I mean for the for the show. Which Fallout are you making? It's kind of like it's kind of like how but, I feel about the Borderlands trailer as well. You <clears throat> you just have to go with the theme. There is it's yeah. a po- nuclear war, post apocalypse, and there are vault dwellers. That's all you really need to know to have a Wild West mutant insanity game. Yes. Or show. And I was watching. I had didn't know anything about the Fallout show, and I watched the trailer. And I'm watching it, and I'm watching it, and I'm watching it. And then I was like, holy shit, that's Walton fucking Coggins. Walton Goggins, yes. Do love him, I, Walton Goggins. Dude, I, I, I rewatched Justified just to see more Walton Goggins. So Yeah. I mean, look, I watched The Book of Boba Fett just for Space Raylan. That I, is, I'll suffer through the shield again because I love him in that as well. Yeah. I mean, he's a national fucking treasure. I love that actor, Misty refers to him as her boyfriend okay okay they've never met and her husband does not mind that walton goggins is her boyfriend well i think of i think if anything like that you're a safe bet with that one it's not channing tatum it's not thor it's it's walton goggins who in his own interview says my teeth and my forehead get into the room before i do so yeah. you know he is a humble man about his appearances and i appreciate that and he's also a phenomenal actor oh my god he's so. an, he's a brilliant actor and that that voice and cadence comes through, even through the recalculous ghoul makeup they've got him in. So yes. yeah, roll that beautiful it, bean of footage. It took me it took me a while to realize that was him as well because like I obviously you see him talking, but when I realized, oh my god, he's the devil guy, fucking fantastic. All right, playing yeah. it. But yeah, I've played four and um, New Vegas. I haven't played seventy six or any of the old ones. I played a couple of the old ones back in the day, but uh, they, they, there was when they were turn based. It didn't do it for me, you know. When yeah. it was more open world ex- exploration style, I, I got more into that. Yeah, because a lot of this early bits of the trailer feels like it's older games. Well, I like well, that old tech. I like that CRT TV. That old. Uh, it's always like Bioshock. It gives me that those Bioshock feels from those yeah. games back in the day. I'm hearing the phrase uh, cartridge futurism a lot in the new Alien movie. They're going back to how the original Alien movies looked, where everything's shit tech by our standards yes. now. But, uh, well, the, I prefer like Star Wars tech over Star Trek tech. I don't like clean iPads. Yeah. I want click clack buttons. I want the 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 floor of the Nostr- in Alien, like I want that great metal floor, that clank, yeah. clank, clank when you walk on it. Exactly. A slightly Wires and uh, shit hanging down. staticky 
uh, comms yeah. screen. I like dirty tech. Mm. Cartridge futurism. Apparently, that's what it's called. I'm here for oh, it. Well, sure. I like dirty tech. Well, that just sounds like something you're going to put your dick in. And there's the hero. Yes. I don't know who the hell she is. Whatever. But that actress, she is the voice of Jinx in um, Arcane, and she is one of the leads in the show Yellow Jackets. If you have not watched that show, it's amazing. It's freaking amazing. Isn't that like Teenage Girl Lord of the Flies? Yes. But it takes place back in the 90s and in the modern for those who have escaped and they're constantly having flashbacks to what happened to them while they were trapped in the mountains. Okay. And, so and it is <laughs> Ooh, they got dog meat. I thought you were gonna say of what happened to them when they were trapped in the nineties. <laughs> well, they basically their plane went down in the mountains and was there something supernatural? Did they have to resort to cannibalism? What all happened? That is such a good line though, right there. God. That is a very small drop in a very large bucket of drugs. Bucket of drugs. Like I just got to give the just the cinematography stylings alone, the set design, the production design, the music. Um, it it, it just everything is a damn screenshot, and it That's feels filthy. really good power armor right. too. Like I can't wait to come to a con and see people having like made that. <laughs> I bet there'll be up. power armor at Dragon Con this year. Oh, I guarantee it. Yeah, like I say, I've never played the game, but it's one of those games that was so impactful in the culture. I feel like I have. It's influential at a certain point, you know, and it's, it's, and Bethesda games, they stand in their own ecosphere. Yeah. And as I'm playing the game again, I'm remembering how atmospheric the whole thing is and how everything does just feel out of time. Because you've got this 50s design ethos Mm -hmm. in 2287 or whatever the hell it is. Um, No, I'm really looking forward to the Fallout show. I think it looks awesome. I think that it can – there's so much to explore. It seems like I'd have to pay a lot less attention than the free body problem. (sighs) Yes. <laughs> I expect no, there to be the- very few unsolvable physics problems in Fallout. Like, I've heard some people, like, I have not seen it myself. I have heard some people, like, like and greatly dislike at the same time the, the um, Halo show on Paramount. And it's one of those, like, we have had a litany of bad video games to movies for, you know, the last 20 years, you know, and mm-hmm. very few of them have ever been, I would consider to be good at all. Um, some are like Mortal Kombat, the first one. It's fun. It's dumb, but it's fun. You know, the first Resident animated, Evil was pretty good. Yeah, the first Resident Evil. Uh, but things like Assassin's Creed, that was no good. Uh, Most Warcraft of them was not time. good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prince of Persia, Max Payne. Like these are all should have been home runs that somehow they managed to screw up. But by taking this the Fallout and turning it into a show that and like looks like they're having like more fun with it because yeah i bet you their budget isn't much more than the the paramount show for halo but they just filled it with old rickety uh uh, patio furniture and it works just film in the desert throw some patio furniture and just burn everything half to death and now it looks like a a wasteland yeah the only thing you have to build that's going to be expensive to animate is going to be your power armor right because then you're going like to have the guy lizards. running around in his green pajamas. But otherwise, it's practical props, mm-hmm. you know. Well, what are the odds of like kind of like the first Iron Man armor was mostly made out of plastic and it was just given that sheen to look like metal on screen? Like what are the odds? Like it's just a guy in a, in a PVC suit. You know what? And- I've seen people at conventions in England, not big conventions, in very convincing uh, Warhammer armor. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Warhammer 50. It's like they can do this practically if they want. Oh yeah. They can. Uh, and I I do like a big clunky practical uh effect. Yeah, yeah I'm, I mean I'm, it would be I'm in for it. I think that it would be great. Uh it looks really good. It looks like it's got enough of the tongue in cheek elements mm-hmm. that the game has. And it looks knowing. Yeah, and, and it looked that. like they avoided some of the most expensive things to make. 
Smart. Like making a pile of eight foot super mutants, which are basically, I don't know, orcs almost. Well, those are going to be expensive to build, but raiders, well, that's just a bunch of guys in scrappy ass leather armor with guns. You can get you, those are de- those are extras. They're cheap. It's cheaper to hire extras than to CG something. It is, and also, I mean, like what their CG budget is like getting rid of Goggins' nose. I mean, just put on the, the the red skull, like the old the old red skull mask that was left over from from Captain America, mm-hmm. and then just CG off his nose, just Voldemort's nose, and you're Reduce, good. Reduce, reuse, recycle. There it is, sir. Ah, hell, Speaking, maybe they just sliced his nose off. It'll be fine. <laughs> Speaking of reduce, reuse, recycle. This brings us to Star Wars The Acolyte. Uh, there has been a lot of hype, a lot of uh, pushback, a lot of everything, because the internet is the internet. Um, Does anyone care about Star Wars anymore? I'm going to be very I honest. I do love not. Star Wars. I used to, I'm the same way. There's been, I know that Lu- I obviously, Disney bought Lucasfilm for many billions because they want to make many billions. And they're going to make an IP to sell more IP back to the mm. people. And I'm tracking that. I think because it's now a commercialized product and we get them so often, same like kind of like the late term MCU, I'm burnt out and mm. I don't care anymore. And I've watched this trailer. It looks cool. My only critique would be, it, obviously Lucas was influenced by Westerns and Samurai films. And obviously Samurai Westerns are influenced by Samurai films. And World War this II tra- movies. Yeah, World War II movies. This one is, it's not even like saying influenced by, it is a samurai move a uh, show like down to the moves and down to the actions. And it's kind of on the nose and I, it doesn't feel influenced by, it feels like it just is. So, uh, but it does have some cool effects. It has, I mean, it's got the star Wars things that star Wars fans would like. It is set a hundred years or so before, uh, the prequel movie. So still the height of the, uh, the Jedi order before the Sith returned. So, uh. so- I don't mind a I don't mind a prequel that is sufficiently in the past that it's not going to affect the. I always thought the that was only a weakness crossover of the character could possibly be is Yoda because yeah. he's a thousand years old. So they were really tried hard to marry up those prequels with what we'd seen in the original movie. Right. Just every time they tried to do it, it did not. Well, it was work. supposed to be the fall of Anakin, and I get mm. that. But the animated series, the the Clone Wars in between, did a much better job than the movies did. Like mm. I really enjoyed that animated Clone Wars series, but. It, it, I will it, say though, people have become a lot more forgiving of the prequels in light of some of the stuff we've had since the prequels. No, nope, Jar Jar is still the fucking devil. Yeah, he, he is, is the, the devil. devil. Nobody's talking about Jar Jar. Whenever I see a meme, it's like, oh, this is a funny Anakin meme. I'm like, go on, and where's your where's your Jar Jar meme? And everybody goes quiet. <laughs> yeah, no one well, wants to remember that shit. So I didn't know this existed. Okay. I it's had, coming very soon. I okay. bevened the shit out of this. I so it's it was it's being the showrunner is a Leslie Headland. Um, there is uh, she was if you saw the show Russian Doll for example on Netflix, which I really enjoyed, which was one of those like um, uh, what's the Groundhog Day thing where people would die and relive the same thing over and over and over. Um, it's one of those type of shows. It was really heady. It was very good. I, I, I did enjoy that recognize show. Recognize one name in the list of. People. I think Carrie Ann Moss, for, like, who you know one. is Trinity. That, yeah, that's the that one, is right? the name. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's the name that I recognize. I don't recognize any other actor name, which is and you fine. Won't. Yeah. Well, the one actor is uh, he was in the Squid Game. If you watch that on Netflix as well, I did not. But, uh, okay, uh, it's a quality show. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and feel free to talk over because it's just more Star Wars. <laughs> Well, I don't like that little creature. Oh, oh that one's there to sell toys. Closed mm. captions are unavailable. Okay, so he's telling these younglings to close their eyes. And close your well. eyes. Uncle Anakin's going to make it all go and, away. And basically, what do you see, you know? <laughs> and the, you know. <sighs> See, not having a sound and the fact that they don't have closed captions, this one kind of sucks. I uh, ain't getting the gist of One it. little girl sees life. One girl sees fire. What does that that horrible thing see? And that's Carrie Ann Moss, who somehow looks younger. She's aging well. Why is she dressed like Rey? Maybe she's raised grandma. Why are the Jedi's dressing the same after a hundred years? 
Well, I've had that same argument. Like it frustrates me in fantasy whenever they have like three thousand. I was there, the Grand Doll, three thousand years ago when the the Ring of Power is almost destroyed. We were wearing the exact same armor, wearing the exact same weapons, and the exact same level of technology. Oh, I don't care about that. Ago. I mean, like, I do. The Chinese had the magnetized exact same compasses. Clothes, the technology has not advanced. Yeah, the Chinese had magnetized compasses for like centuries before they figured out. Oh, we could probably use this to navigate the ocean. Three they were using it for fucking feng years, shui. Steve. We went, from, <laughs> we went from flight to the moon in seventy. Uh, yeah, but that's because we're cool. Well, that's true. And also, there are magic. If you have magic, it's like cars. Ever since I got a car, do you think I walk anywhere? No, my walking skills have atrophied massively. If you've got magic in a world, then you get complacent. I cannot, for the life of me, be arsed to care about that. Oh, I do not give a shit. Yeah. I mean, I mean if it's great, it's great. Wonderful. I am supremely indifferent to everything I just watched on the screen. Mm. I yeah. feel the same way. Um, and I guess it's it's burnout. Here's the thing. If this had come out before, say, before the, the new Ray Skywalker, uh, uh, the new trilogy, I might have been jazzed because we were hungry for new Star Wars when that happened. We were starving for new Star Wars. It had been years and we were hoping for like something beautiful. I mean, there's a reason that like The Force Awakens made like $2 billion because we were starving for Star Wars. Now when the stuff comes on, like the book of Boba Fett, I'm like, oh, why? My God, why? No, it, you, you, really. Uh. There is so much content so often. And for me, lately, I need content that is – I'm watching TV to escape. Right. Mm. I, th- I have to think a lot in my daily life. I, I want to hear Walton Goggins talk about a big bucket of drugs. Yes. I, I want that way yeah. more than I want some kids sitting cross legged on the floor seeing fire. I'm like, well, right. that's kind of fucked up, kid. There's just, it's not even that there's so much Star Wars. There were so many missteps. And I still remember that kid, Princess Leia chase scene. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, did, who directed this? You people have millions and millions of dollars. And the Obi Wan show, yeah, like it, tonally, and, it was all over the place. And oh yeah, sucked. I never watched it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there. Were, here's the thing: every single one of those shows, like, with except Mandalorian, has moments of coolness. I don't mm. give it moments of coolness. Um, it's a my higher higher level thing. Um, but it, it, it never, nothing's ever really got, for me gotten above a C plus to a B. In, here's, in yeah, range. I agree with you, but here's where I think the problem is because they all got to be series now because we've got to get people uh, paying Subscribe. for Disney Plus yeah. so people can feed. Got to uh, get that hundred bucks a year for Disney Plus. Walt Disney's frozen head, the nutrients it needs, or whatever. But what they've done and what they've done in Marvel is they'll take a concept which would have been great for three episodes max, and they'll make it into eight, and then there's just a lot of suck. Yes. And then it becomes more suck than good. And I start to feel like I'm wasting my time. And I shouldn't ever feel like I'm wasting my time because I do nothing with my time at all of any use. <laughs> so if your show is making me feel like, man, I, I should probably go clean the kitchen, you fucked up. Because I don't want to clean the kitchen. Speaking of you and speaking of Marvel, Steve, I, I made a joke many moons back, and you, you jumped on me immediately after I said it, because I said Beast is no one's favorite X-Man, and you oh, yeah, hopped on me with both feet. Like, he's my favorite. Like, why? Because he's muscular and hairy? You know, you're like, yes. You know, so yeah. have you he's- watched the 97, the new show yet? No, but I hear it's great. And everybody, t- this might sound a bit hypocritical, because every time I come on one of these media reflection podcasts, mm-hmm. I talk about- Leave, leave stuff in the past. Stop fucking around with it. Right. But what they've done is they've taken a show that for its time was pretty fucking ambitious, even yes. though we weren't putting the money into cartoons back then like we do now. And yeah, that thing with Rogue's ass, nothing's been taken away from you. 90s cartoons were not on model. It's Her still on Disney Plus. You can go back like and that. watch the same episodes 
and see you, that you just, app. Just look on Tumblr. You'll find something similar. It's yes. fine. Nothing's been taken away of you. What, they were horribly is, off model at the time. All right. So in the what 90s about, X-Men cartoon. What is it about Rogue's it, ass? I missed this. Okay. In the original 90s skill. X-Men cartoon, they were, they, everybody, all the women were drawn exceptionally shapely and obviously the men were drawn overly muscular because they're comic book characters. And Not all the time so, though. Well, she, I mean, she was always like drawn as like, mm. they made her way more vivacious, way more uh, uh, buxom uh, because it was that whole, but you you see, but you can't touch because of Rogue, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So for the new show, they, they took a, 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 a you know, a, objectively beautiful round butt and gave her a flat butt because less, less of a male gaze. And I understand why they did it. I know why they did it at the time. Because no, we're perverts no, back then, and I understand we're trying to be yeah, better human beings now. No, we're not. We're still all perverts now. It's a trying. We just, we just do safe horny. It's like, have you seen the fucking Batman comic strips with uh, Nightwing? His yeah. ass is like constantly out all the time. It's just we. So we're all still horny. But the thing is, that picture of Rogue, well, it was yes. whatever they modeled it on with that giant ass. She wasn't like that all the time. It's they're, they're wildly inconsistent with character. No, that was only when Adam Hughes drew her for covers. Yeah. Now, uh, well, here's a question for you, Steve. This is a yes. deep, serious, philosophical question. Oh, God. Look at the time. Yeah. We should probably wrap up. Who's really people. America's ass? Is it Captain America or is it Nightwing? Uh, well, Nightwing's ass has been a lot more pornographized, and I think that just makes for a better ass. And America here. All is those, the land of the porn. Yeah, all those like fantasy covers where they're like, uh, "Who wears a chainmail bikini?" Uh, somebody with a fucking great body. All those uh, '90s things where like, where are her organs? They're in her tits, where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantasy. Well, Grow it's up. One, it's, it's one fine. Of those things, like I understand that argument, but I also grew up watching like the Barbarian Twins, uh, Beastmaster, Conan, where all yeah. they wore were loincloths as well, and it was all like. Pex, I was groins, built like thrust, those guys. I'd only wear a loincloth too. Stupid and practical. It goes right back to what we were saying before. I was ripped like the Stars Guard guy. I'd be in my underwear. Absolutely. Constantly. The like, theory of the male gaze. Right. Even the person who came up with the theory of the male gaze was like, this is not the be all and end all of media discussion. It's like, it doesn't mean male gaze equal bad. Extreme things uh, in their place, fantastic. As long as it's not all the time and you're not sexualizing stuff that doesn't need to be sexualized. You can just have like fantastic bodies. They're fun to look at, male and female. They're brilliant. Yeah. Humans are interesting to look at. That's why comic books were drawn the way they were for the very like. Yeah, you don't need a comic book. Format. You don't need a character drawn like me. You know, you just yeah. and you don't want that. So. I don't want a realistic comic book character because comic books are supposed to be extreme. They're supposed to hit the eye in a certain way. It's just I will how say cartoons this: the work. show I watched the first episode and it. it the, nah, 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 nah. It hits you right like you did back in the day. Uh, the, obviously, the animation's cleaned up a little bit, but they are very much trying to emulate that 90s style. And it picks up right where the old show left off. From what I've seen, the animation is fucking solid. It's it really is very solid. Now, my, it, But it does bring me back to the one, like the writer part of my brain that I can't turn off. They bring in this one, they bring in a new mutant kid, just like they did Jubilee in the first one. And it's Sunspot, uh, Roberto da Costa. And they've got the little collar on him that's neutralizing his powers. And he is the the Jubilee for this first episode where they save him, just like Jub- they save Jubilee. Mm. And it's, you know, it kind of emulates the first episode again, but in a nice, fun, cool way to kind of reintroduce all the characters. And it's it's really cool. But inevitably, we have a scene where, you know, obviously Rose next to Gambit. I hate Gambit. I hate Gambit. Sorry, Ari Carr. I hate Gambit. Um and she's like, I, you know, I miss. I wish I could be touched. I wish I could be touched. And in game, it's like, oh, I'll share. Blah 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 blah. You have the technology. Clip that. Clip this mm. thing on, and you have no powers. And it's sexy time. Literally. I mean, we could make yeah. it a bracelet, but the technology exists. So the writer part of my brain is, you can't say this and then show me this tech, which would fix all the problems. So if comic book writing was consistent, the Flash would just spend all this time solving every crime as it happened. Yet because no one would ever be able to lose yeah. the flash by ducking out of the room and turning left instead of right. Yeah. What would happen is like, every time somebody went to stab someone, the knife would disappear and a note would appear in the hand saying, fucking stop it, signed the flash. Like on a, <laughs> on a, on a, on a global scale all the time. 
Every time somebody well, like raised their hands. In a, uh, did you ever read the Kingdom Come series? He, yeah. that version that Alex Ross drew, that what that's what happened to the Flash. His city, exactly. Keystone City, was crimeless because he couldn't stop moving. He was always in motion, so there was no crime exactly. whatsoever. And I think city. how many speeds does he have? Like the logical, like everyone who uses speed, there should be no crime. If I even think about a crime, there should just be. I should just suddenly find myself back at home with a a very kind of like patronizing letter from the flash telling me to get my life together we're going to send you that one letter last, anyway <laughs> one last trailer to share with everybody and this is right, just to make it. old man hartner smile john i'm going to bring up the trailer for roadhouse <laughs> hey. now walk us into this what, all right what makes roadhouse so special roadhouse is an iconic piece of mm-hmm. an Amer- of american cinema preach because not only do you have the late, great shirtless Patrick Swayze, mm-hmm. you have the incredible Sam Elliott as the ass-kicking mentor of mm-hmm. Patrick Swayze. You have the spectacularly Queen hot Garrett. Kelly Lynch. Mm-hmm. And you have the greatest house band in the history of movie Jeff bar Healy scenes, band. the Jeff yes. Healy band, also sadly deceased. But you have a blind guitar, blues guitar player. And you have so many running jokes, so many quotable moments. Ah, you play pretty good for a blind white guy. Yeah, and I thought you'd be bigger. I thought you'd be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you know... There are – you have former world world's heavyweight champion Terry Funk. Miss, sir Terry Funk? Yes, sir. You have so many phenomenal character actors and Swayze just getting the rocket absolutely strapped to him at that point in his career. It's a – it's a Western. The movie yes. is a Western. It is Coming a man to comes to town, to town yes. cleans up the bad guys. The yeah. man with one name. Don't. Yeah. Um, we were talking earlier about plot writing versus cool shit writing. There, I don't think Roadhouse has a plot, really, that's worth talking about. It's just a string of Shut cool your one-liners. Shut drinking mouth. Now, he was <laughs> hired <laughs> to come in and clean up the double deuce. And he that's, did that's it. That's not a plot. That's a situation. Everything else is just pure icing. There's no cake in no. this movie. It's all delicious it's icing. It's the Magnificent <laughs> Seven without the other six guys. Yeah, ex- it well, is the an Magnif- Akira five. Kurosawa you get, you get Wade film. Garrett. You got Wade Garrett. It's Magnificent Two. You have one and a half. Magnificent One Point Five. Okay, so, oh, you need to show Sam Elliott some more respect. Oh, but, I adore okay, Sam so, Elliott. But, no, not you, sir. The, the, Patrick the, the, Swayze fills this movie. <laughs> There yes. are two pieces of trivia that I uh, for this flick. One, can you name the late, unfortunately late, great uh, cartoon voice actor of our generation who was also in this movie who offered one of the drunks twenty dollars to touch his girlfriend's boobies? No, no. Chris, I Latta, remember that of, scene. The voice of Starscream and Cobra Commander, Chris Latta. Uh, does he do it in the Starscream voice? <laughs> He does not. I'll give you twenty dollars to touch your girlfriend's well, when, he's, he's, when, the, when the guy goes, I don't have twenty dollars. He's like, what? And his voice goes up an octave, <laughs> and he goes right to that voice. Go back to that scene, and you will never be able to unsee it. Oh my it. god! Yeah. Number no, two, I'm, Megatron's not here anymore. I'm the leader of Decepticons. Time to touch that's some actually movies. Pretty good. Jesus, man, <laughs> that's not bad. And number two, because because no one, I think it was I think it was Lionsgate that put the movie out. No one from the movie came back to record the DVD soundtrack. So, do you know who did do the DVD soundtrack? Uh, excuse me, the, the the DVD commentary. Excuse me. No one was available. Do you know who came back to actually do it for the DVD release? Starscream. Kevin Smith. Kevin oh. Smith and his because he was just because it was tangible because the movie was put out at the time and I think it was like it got bought out by the time by the Weinstein Corporation and, and Smith was heavily involved with the Weinstein's at the time or Miramax so him and his producer Scott Moser are do the voice they they do the commentary they had nothing to do with the movie they were not in the movie they were just they just tell jokes the entire like time the over the commentary if you have a DVD copy somewhere. Or on Amazon Prime, if you can find it, watch it with a commentary. Oh, that's <laughs> it is great. Sounds, 
that sounds really good. Also, can we discuss Kathleen Wilhoyt as the amazing rando chick that works at the bar who then finally gets her scene on sing. stage yeah. to sing? She's going to knock yeah. on wood. <sighs> no, it, the whole – the movie is a goddamn classic. It is. And it is. I will – and I won't fight anyone who disagrees because you got to be nice. You got to be nice until it's time not to be nice. Right. <laughs> so that so, leads us into this trailer. All right. I'm curious. John, you started, you said you started watching this because it dropped today and I know what I'm going to do it, later. It released today. Okay. And Jake Gyllenhaal I've not ever been a massive fan of his. He's fine. He's a perfectly serviceable actor. I like I, act, I honestly feel quite bad for him in this movie because the level of dehydration that he must have achieved to, get that to look yep. like this, the man must the man must not have had to piss for a week after he finally was able to was allowed food and water again. Hugh Jackman used to say before he did his shirtless scenes, like a lot of the Wolverines, when he comes out of the tank and whatever, he would not drink water for 48 mm. hours prior. And he, he would have an incredible migraine headache so bad as mm. soon as the scene was done, just start chugging. So. James Marsters said on Michael Rosenbaum's amazing um, podcast. In your house podcast. Yep. The Inside of You or whatever. Yeah. Oh, Inside of You. Yeah. Yeah. James Marster said on there that when Whedon told him that he was going to be a love interest in the latter seasons of Buffy, he said, that's fine, but I need three days notice before any shirtless scenes because you're not fucking doing to me what you did to Riley. Mm. Because the guy that played Riley, they didn't give him any notice and he looked like a normal human being with his shirt off. Because normal human beings. I want my leading men to look like they're about to die. So <laughs> push play. I'm going to. Now, Steve, a little setup for this. If you haven't seen it, it is he is a former retired UFC fighter doing the exact same thing. And the Irish uh, menace, Conor McGregor, is the nemesis. That's it. That's all you need to know. Sounds good. Jack Gyllenhaal always looks a little bit sad. No, he does have sad face. Yeah. Oh, he's a great actor, but when he's his voice is not Dalton. No, this feels more like Deadpool does Roadhouse. Yes, mm. that's a, this scene right here was almost line for line from the original. The scene where he's getting stitched up in the hospital. Yeah, Do you, ever, you like to fight? You ever win a fight? Nobody ever Don't wins hurt. a fight. That's directly from the original script. This is all new and honestly makes more sense as a plot device than this guy's a random temp bouncer well, who see, goes the original, from town to like, town. The, the concept of Dalton and Wade Garrett is almost like John Wick and the Assassins. Like there's a secret underground club that you don't know about, but they're all like it's this network of bouncers that all know each other. Yeah, and that's dumb. But the idea of going to an underground pit fight. Yes. This guy's a psychopath. The bad guy in this is far more completely psychotic. Well, that's than, Conor McGregor. That's he's not acting. No, he's I mean the acting. guy on the boat. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's the big bad. Conor McGregor's the muscle. That's true. Yeah, yeah. He's the uh I fuck guys like you in prison guy. Yeah. Right there. And he looks way bigger than he did when he was actually fighting. Well, the, the camera adds four feet to your height. So, um, no, I, I just mean he camera. looks way thicker. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's not as fighting weight anymore. He doesn't have to be like 162 pounds anymore. He can be like a normal 195 guy. Yeah. But yeah, that dude in the pink blazer, his character is absolutely psycho. This bit of dialogue seems stupid. Yeah, that's, that's straight out of like Dr. Banner. Yeah. Why is there a boat chase? What's going on? What the well, fuck? Because they're in, the in Miami. Yeah, or Florida. They didn't need a boat chase in the original. Well, that well they weren't. In- was. So that launched today, and yes. I went and watched about the first 30 minutes of it. And? 
it's actually really clever. I, I was, was not expecting clever. I was not <laughs> either. Nor was I. It's actually pretty clever. It makes more sense. The motivate the bad guy has a better motivation than hmm. the original because the original is just a bad guy being a bad guy. He was a this guy actually clown, yeah. wants something. Um, I haven't got. I haven't seen McGregor yet. That okay. he has not appeared in the first half hour of the film. The flashback. There are. Um, Gyllenhaal has flashbacks to his apparently seriously mediocre UFC career. Um, and those don't make much sense to me yet, but again, I'm 30 minutes in. I, John, I was a lot more confident about this when I thought it was going to be dumb. I mean, Roadhouse (laughs) is great. It's a classic, but it is all I think. It's a dumb movie. Oh yeah. It's Uh, dumb. Filled with great one-liners and fantastic screen presence. Yeah. Uh, But, it was done. That's why I didn't mind. Like, I always come to this podcast. I always say, leave shit in the past. Stop remaking stuff, you greedy, fucking coked up bastards. But when they say, oh, we're going to remake Roadhouse, I thought, yeah, that would be stupid. Well, see, a lot of the internet says, like, take a bad movie and remake that instead. And I agree. Roadhouse is fun bad. And Roadhouse is not sacrosanct. Yeah. You can remake Roadhouse and have fun yeah. with it. And what they've done, my fear was that it was going to be yet another Jason Statham retires to the Florida Keys and has to beat everybody up kind of movie. I mean, but I'd watch it. it. Well, I, I mean, too. I'll basically watch almost anything Jason Statham is in except the Meg 2 because everyone's warned me off of that. Um, it's a Meg. He retires but, to the Florida, Florida Keys and beats up a shark. But this... <laughs> And I had real concerns about Jake Gyllenhaal as the Dalton character because Jake Gyllenhaal and badass are not things that uh, he's versatile. Though, well, again, I'll point you to my favorite movie, Bubble Boy, and uh, or Jake Gyllenhaal. Your favorite Donnie movie, Darko Comedy Darko and what? I, I'm saying, I, my favorite Jake Gyllenhaal movie. It's it's actually a fun dumb movie. It's sweet. I, I stand by Bubble Boy, but he's pretty good in the role and they the the things that they've done to update it i like not everybody is a crazy ass white person which is good you know there are more people in the world so it's more representative (laughs) it's more representative of what the florida keys are like the chick behind the bar is a cuban chick so he comes in and he's like, hey, can I get a black coffee? She's like, no, we got Cuban coffee. He's like, all right, I'll take that. And then he's like, whoa, that's uh, that's something. I yeah. like it. And she brings him breakfast just like the chick in the original movie. But she brings him empanadas. You know, okay. it's it feels smartly done. Um. <clears throat> He does yoga instead of Tai Chi because, of course, he does yoga. Uh, you know, it just – he's living in a, on a houseboat instead of living in a barn. I mean, hell, if I just – if I can go to the Florida Keys, punch a couple of people and live on a houseboat for free, I'm kind of here for that. I felt about the news of this remake exactly as I did for the news of remaking Highlander. Now, I love Highlander, but it's a stupid movie. And yeah. um, if somebody wants to, and Highlander Two was just fucking awful. So. There was only ever one Highlander movie. Yeah. So if anybody wants to say, "Oh, I've got to remake Highlander," I'm like, "Fair play to you. Go for it." Uh, I remember being an eight year old kid disappointed with Highlander Two and not really being intellectually yes, or culturally was, developed enough to understand why. Why don't I, I like was this? High movie? school when that came out. I'm a few years older. It broke me. Uh, that being said, once I heard that. Uh, 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 that mi- Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Superman himself, uh, whose name is escaping the name, Cavill, Henry Cavill, Cavill. It yeah. is behind the thing for Highlander. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. I'm kind of in for him to do anything nerd adjacent yeah. because he is he such a nerd. Yeah. yeah. I trust it, him. That was it, Ungentlemanly Bastards uh, movie? He's him. He's got one with Alan Richmond, but it's playing that like World War II, basically. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's, 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 glorious, it's a British and Glorious yeah. Bastards. And mm. I can't wait to see it. Me too. Yeah, yeah Ministry for really Unjustified Warfare. That will be cool. But also, when, I love Alan Richardson too. 
yeah. even before they said Henry Cavill was attached to remaking Highlander, I was like, yeah, sure. Why the fuck not? It's a dumb movie. You're not going to, yeah. the hundred year old movie or whatever it is. It's like, are you going to put, is, are you going to make Queen do the soundtrack? No, Freddie Mercury's dead. Are you going to have references in the movie to the soundtrack? Does anyone do that anymore? It's like, you're probably not going to remake Highlander. That's always going to be its own dumb little thing, which I love. But, uh, that being yeah. said, you could just totally put the same music back in and you'd be just fine. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, please do. Yeah. And, and you can make Clancy Brown the Ramirez character, and I'll be okay exactly, with that. Exactly, yeah. And the bad guy has to at some point say it's better to burn out than to fade away. The fade away, Absolutely. that's right. You have to like turn to the camera and say the name of a Queen song. Yeah. And, you know, we're all just okay with that because Who Queen is cool. Who wants to live forever? is cool. Wink. Yeah. Wink. Yeah. Wink. You know. Just actually Wink. <laughs> How do you live? Does, how do you live? He this does long? wink. Well, Originally, it's Christopher kind of Lambert. Magic. Yeah, it's a kind of magic. It's a kind of magic. <laughs> uh, no, please do that again. I mean, if you yeah, make it as do dumb as you, <laughs> those fat bottom girls, they make the world go round. Them right there, those those rogue <laughs> girls with the fat bottoms, they make the world go. Round. If every other line he says is a queen lyric, I'll be absolutely made up with that. <laughs> he only speaks in queen lyrics. I tried to do that once. I wrote a character who only spoke in quotes from shakespeare that's a lot fucking harder than to yeah do in a narrative and it's a i felt really happy that i only used that character in one novella because that shit got old fast oh no i think if you did it with queen songs though in a highlander movie it'd work like the final standoff <laughs> but ah so here we are masters of the universe <laughs> you could just quote that entire song that they wrote for the cook uh the Highlander series. And that's after you burn somebody down. That's what they call me, Mr. Fahrenheit. You know, <laughs> exactly. But yeah. I'm excited about, you can't I'm excited stop about Highlander. As soon as we're done recording this, I'm going to go watch the rest of roadhouse because I liked the first chunk of it. I only watched a chunk because I watched it while I was eating lunch and I had to fun. get back to actual do actually do things. But yeah, it's so far. It's a lot of fun. Um, they're not asking Conor McGregor to do any more acting than they asked Terry Funk in the original. <laughs> Wise. <laughs> He's just an Irish asshole. Good. In the movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know Conor McGregor. I don't know if he's actually an asshole. I assume he probably is an asshole. His entire media persona. He might be a really nice guy in real life. But, But, and certainly if I am ever granted the opportunity to meet Conor McGregor, I will not call him an asshole because I would be terrified to do so. No, that seems like, seems needlessly risky. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, only if I have large, large people to hide behind. Mm. Well, I've got to say, uh, I've been more positive, I think, about this side quest media <laughs> reflection than I have in any other side quest media reflection we've done. I, well, I, I think, think you're a right. lot of these, a lot of these ones stand out for themselves. It's like, listen, this is obviously cash grab, and you, it's, it's not reflective. But the ones we showed, like the ones that stood out, they stood out, and they were positive, and they were uplifting. I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to like watching, I'm, like what we just said with Roadhouse, or I'm watching for, for, for Fallout. Mm. And, and even the Crow um, movie. Three bodies. I, I no, don't think I'm, the Crow movie is going to be good, but I think it's probably something I will, I will put on. Yeah. I very likely will not watch the crow i will probably watch three body problem and not finish it and feel bad about it Mm, yeah (laughs) because i'll feel like an intellectual failure it's Mm. one of those it's one of those shows that comes up in conversation oh have you seen three oh no but it's in my queue oh it's on my next watch yeah yeah the crow remake is not going to make me feel like an intellectual failure no crow when it comes to hbo or netflix i will watch the crow then i'm not going i'm not paying theater prices for that Um, oh wait that's a real release like that's yeah. a go in the theater yeah. and watch that bullshit yeah. release. If there, hadn't been a, if there hadn't been a Scars Garden now, actually, I would have thought this is made it's, for it's TV, something right? you said- I mean, he and Famke Jansen were in that Netflix werewolf series together, so. Mm, yeah, true. Was oh, it uh, something Pines? Or- yeah. yeah. Pines? It was Wayward gross, Pines? Gross Twilight. It wasn't Wayward Pines. It was no. two, two cute guys get covered in blood a lot, and it's. Gross. I like gross. Oh no, gross yeah, twilight. okay. I, 
Yeah. But like you said, they keep they keep diving back to our now. I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's executives our age <clears throat> or if they there's they're just trying to pander to people from our era. But like at the same time, you don't you don't need to keep digging out old projects. I don't need a new Flash Gordon. Mm. Maybe I do. I don't know yet. I'll have to see the trailer. But again, Queen songs. But you know, every time I see something <laughs> exactly. that's a quality of now, Aww. like when I see when they make Blue Eyed Samurai. And that blows me away in animation and in style great, and yeah. everything they do. Like that is phenomenal storytelling. And like that in Arcane and a few of these other ones that immediately One lead piece. up to like, mm. yeah, what, like this is your new bar. Like, so again, either above we're not or below. talking about, I mean, even Blue Eyed Samurai, right? that had a very kind of something they would have done in the 90s if they had better budget. Um, you got to ask yourself though, who's still watching TV? Is anybody under 20 year olds actually watching tv that's a very good point i mean it's, well they it just do. does man I mean, they- <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah blues clues and then it's straight onto fucking youtube so yeah tiktok videos more fucking well, commercials well, that on YouTube than there are on network tv <laughs> steve give me one movie from your era that you want remade oh hawk the slayer say that again hawk the slayer i don't the know what really that is, but- really low budget fantasy movie that tried to do seven samurai but with fantasy characters okay elves and dwarfs on a budget of about 50 quid filmed on somebody's dad's camcorder <laughs> i'd love to remake that exact same budget exact same locations exact same ethos hey yeah, i got a script John. for you i'm releasing a book this summer that is a high fantasy seven samurai <laughs> it, do you have a giant who's not actually that tall and a dwarf who really isn't that short <laughs> Depends on how you cast no, it. Baby. I saw that in Galavan. I do have a dwarf, dwarf and a and his half orc wife. That's <sighs> okay. fantastic, John. Movie or TV show from back in our day that needs a remake? Greatest American Hero. Fan freaking fantastic. That is an <laughs> because amazing. That show was stupid as hell. Yes, you it was. Can't make it smart. I need. I need the same song. You can do a modern cover, but I need the same song. Yeah, I need the believe it or not, and uh, I for me for me it's a tie between Beastmaster and like a good but a good remake of Beastmaster and or maybe the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Do it more like the comic was. <sighs> Just remake the movie shot for shot, line for line, until the last ten minutes, and then put a fucking decent ending on it. Well, don't, that put, was 95%, don't put Tom Sawyer as an American agent in it. <laughs> that was ninety five percent of a great movie. And like every Stephen King novel, they couldn't stick the fucking landing. Fair enough. All right. Does anybody else have anyone they want to share with the audience before we sign off? Any last plugs? Uh, I, re- remember to pressure me to watch Free Body Problem. I should really do better about that. Remember to buy my shit, and I really don't hate Stephen King. I just think he can't stick the landing. Uh, I, I'm indifferent on Stephen King and also buy my shit. So on behalf of these other amazing authors, uh, this has been another episode of Side Quest with Authors and Dragons. We thank you all very much, and we hope to see you all soon. Bye, and everybody. In case, and in case oh. we haven't said it recently enough, fuck you, Mark. Oh, yeah, fuck you, Mark. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons!